testing it, but also looking at turning them into new growth engines. For example, in partnering uh, different solution provider to scale this business a lot faster, uh, to actually expand beyond the shores of Singapore as well into the regional markets. In fact, Singtel's already begun a partial sale via auction of its Australian subsidiary Optus's towers. But it is not just about purely selling it. Uh, within that divestment, you also see that we, have com- we are also committing to building new towers uh, in that asset. Observers say the telco's latest strategy is a step in the right direction. They say Singapore's telecom sector continues to be pressured by challenges like travel restrictions. Roaming revenue will not come back. Uh, those prepaid revenues from, um, from foreign workers and uh, tourism and tourists, right? They won't be coming back. It's all about in this, uh, in this environment, cut your costs. And ultimately, when things start to open up, revenue starts to ramp, ramp up, right? At that point, if you have growing revenue and you have cut your costs, that, will, that combination will actually culminate in earnings growth. Despite the weaker earnings, Singtel has proposed a final dividend per share of 2.4 Singapore cents. This brings its total dividend per share to 7.5 Singapore cents. Some cities in China's southern province of Guangdong are asking factories to curb the use of electricity. High industry use and hot weather are putting a strain on the power grid. Guangdong is a major manufacturing hub. Its electricity use in April jumped by more than 20% from COVID hit levels last year. Higher temperatures are also boosting demand for air conditioning. Local power companies in some cities, including Guangzhou, have reportedly urged factories to halt production during peak hours or even shut down for two to three days a week. Manufacturers in China are already being forced to lower output due to recent hikes in prices of raw material prices, including steel and aluminium. The latest data shows profits at China's industrial firms grew at a much slower pace last month compared with March. That's due to high commodity prices and weaker performance in the consumer goods sector. And that's your business update. Back to you, Don. Thanks very much, Liz. Frog skin and fish scales can soon be used to repair human bones. Scientists at the Nanyang Technological University here in Singapore have developed a way to use the biomaterial instead of a patient's own tissues. It will also help tackle the problem of aquaculture waste. For the first time, the team has managed to use discarded bullfrog skin and fish scales to create the biomaterial. It acts as a scaffold for cells to multiply so new bones can be formed. Patients with jaw defects from trauma or cancer surgery may be able to use this recovery method in a clinical setting in about five years. It could also be used for bone growth during dental implants. The normal way of getting the source, the collagen sources and our in-house development method, we can actually save up to 40% of the time to get the same exact materials. So it's more like more than 40% of the uh, shortening of the time frame to get our final product compared to the traditional methods. A decade has passed since the disastrous accident at Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. But some people are only now starting to return home. Michio Ishida has more from Okuma. Okuma Town, ground zero of the 2011 Fukushima nuclear accident. 11,000 people used to live here. Today, much of it still looks like a horror movie set. In 2019, the government declared that parts of the town were considered safe for residents to return. Around 800 now reside in this area. Most are temporary residents who came to Okuma to help with the decommissioning of the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. About 300 are former residents who returned to Okuma recently, like 23-year-old Mahiko Sato. Makiko was 13 when she was evacuated from Okuma after the triple disaster 10 years ago. She returned to Okuma last year after her budding theater career in Tokyo came to a dead end because of COVID-19. She has lived in a government-sponsored house since returning to Okuma. She also found a job with the local government. Um, 町民の方と役場の方の 
なんか中間ぐらいにいる立場なので今はもう楽しめているその状況もこう明日仕事に行くの楽しみだなとかあんまり Coming back to Okuma has triggered a sense of mission in her for the town 奥間に13年間しかもともと住んでなかったから知らないことの方が多いですしもっと奥間を知っていかなきゃいけないなって思いますし、うん、さらにこう新しい奥間を作っていく世代だと思うのでそこはあの意識していこうかなって思ってます。マキコ has settled in well in her new home. But Okuma Mayor Jun Yoshida said he cannot paint a future for Okuma yet. この赤いところがじゃあここは除染をいつやるんだとかいつから、まあ、例えば住むことができるんだとかっていうことは全く計画の立っていないところがこの赤いところなんですこういう大きく今3つですかね分けられてますこっちのグリーンのところは中間貯蔵施設ですのでこちらは、まあ、人間が住むってことはもうそもそもありえないところですのでね。He said for areas that have been decontaminated, there have been efforts to repopulate them, although the progress has been slow. 特定復興再生拠点っていう860ヘクタールあるんですけど、そこを位置づけたところは、除染をして、インフラも整備してということで、来年の春、こう解除を目指している場所です、この黄色いところは。This is the yellow area the mayor referred to. Ahead of the lifting of its no entry zone status next year, a new train station was recently opened in the area. Ono train station reopened in 2020, but right in front of the train station are homes surrounded by barricades. Hardly anyone uses this train station, although the commuter express train stops here. It will be a long time before a new future for the town arrives. Michio Ishida CNA, Okuma Town, Fukushima. And that's wrap for Asia Tonight. Headlines anytime at CNA.Asia. And you can also find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Good night. Skies. The weather, sponsored by Qatar Airways. Sponsored by Qatar Airways. From the top stories in Asia, a quicker, portable way of testing for COVID 19 in just five minutes, to breaking news in the US and Europe. US President elect Joe Biden is set to formally introduce his top economic team. With an eye on markets opening across the world, Wall Street's major indices all close the month with double digit percentage gains. It's the one bulletin that offers you a global perspective. World Tonight, daily. CNA. This Saturday, 
Could rising inflation derail the post-pandemic economic recovery?